So you documented a lot of what you learned during this time in the Walls Protocol, and um, mm. you recently <clears throat> updated that book. Um, yes. So, so it has a, a new update. So could you explain something about the Walls Protocol? Because it's, um, I mean, I, I understand that diet is a key part of it, but also you have other elements like exercise and yes, meditation. Yes. And So uh, again, we're focused on creating uh, health at the cellular level. Mm. So on the diet, we have people get rid of uh, the really harmful foods, the added sugar, uh, the processed foods. Uh, and we're talking about more vegetables uh, in the green cabbage uh, onion family, uh, mm. deeply colored. And then uh, we have to have plenty of protein. And now this depends, is this a meat eater or a vegetarian? So I have different plans uh, for each. Uh, and then we talk about the need to address stress and cortisol levels, the need to address sleep, uh, the need to address uh, movement, social connections. Uh, and, and because your brain and my brain is wired for pleasure and um, you're eating sugar, eating processed foods, is a very deeply pleasurable experience. Most of us um, have a certain amount of craving. We may have uh, food addictions. So we, we talk about finding your internal motivation to do this work. Because when you, when you extinguish a harmful habit or create a beneficial habit, um, that's gonna require a, a fair amount of work. And, and what's going to be your internal motivation? to do that work, to uh, extinguish the bad habits and nurture the desirable ones. Right, so yes, yeah, so it's about the motivation. Um, so can you talk a little bit about the your thinking behind the diet, the structuring of the diet? I mean, <clears throat> what components yeah. are you looking for? So in, in terms of the vegetables, mm -hmm. uh, well, no, let me first come back, the things we need to remove Gluten, dairy, eggs, these are the three most common uh, foods that cause excessive uh, immune response. Uh, and so I, I have to explain that you need to get them entirely out of your diet. That right. if you have them occasionally, it's still activating your immune system. It's still going to cause inflammation and irritation in the brain, in your spinal cord, and in your bloodstream. So mm -hmm. uh, that's one point. You want to remove the harmful foods. And I'm also going to put in uh, added sugar in, in that group as well. Uh, the processed foods we want to reduce. Uh, and then uh, we replace the added sugars, the more processed foods, with more vegetables. I'm looking for green leafy vegetables, a uh, mm -hmm. great source of vitamin K, um, which your bacteria will metabolize into K2 and K4, which is um, important for uh, bone minerals, uh, teeth minerals and for myelin production in your brain. Mm. Also a great source of antioxidants and carotenoids uh, and magnesium. Mm -hmm. uh, then we also uh, recommend uh, sulfur-containing vegetables in the cabbage mm -hmm. family, onion family, mushroom family. Right. Which are uh, very helpful for your detox pathways mm -hmm. and helpful for making neurotransmitters. And then the third category is uh, deeply pigmented uh, so things, we, if you slice them, they're colored all the way through. Mm -hmm. So beets, carrots, berries, I would be good examples of that. Uh, and we have many, many studies showing that um, eating more non-starchy vegetables and berries associated with lower rates of cognitive decline, lower rates of diabetes, uh, cancer, uh, mental health problems. So th uh, that's part of why we're ramping up the vegetables sufficient protein so you can make all the structures mm -hmm. that we need to make um, uh, in our body. And then uh, uh, healthy fats, because your brain is 70% fat. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the low fat diet uh, can create problems with your myelin. So you have difficulty repairing the myelin in your brain. Right. So do you have a macronutrient mix target I mean, because it sounds low carb. What uh, it, it's certainly, uh, depending on the plan, it's moderate carb or low carb. So I do have a ketogenic version. Mm. Uh, and the amount of protein uh, will depend on uh, gender, male or female, and the amount of physical work that's being done. 
Right. In general, I, I prefer a, a lower protein diet. Um, so it's not a high protein diet. Uh, uh, we have more of the healthy fats, sufficient protein, sufficient carbs. Right. Do you see the requirement for uh, protein to increase as you get older? Uh, absolutely. Once, so I'm over 65 now. Um, so that means that my protein requirement has increased um, because uh, I, I'm going to be at risk for sarcopenia, that is uh, muscle mass loss. And the way to com combat that is a higher protein diet and more strength training. Right. Yes. And so while we're still on diet, how important is organic? I mean, is it more important to have these vegetables or is it more, or, or that they're out organic? Well, in my clinics at the VA, uh, uh, we ran a therapeutic lifestyle clinic. Uh, and in that clinic, uh, um, we saw, you know, people could get referred who had a complex chronic health challenge. Often these individuals uh, had multiple autoimmune issues, uh, mental health problems, uh, insulin resistance. They're on uh, 15 to 30 uh, different medications. And because they had a chronic health problem, they were usually disabled, unable to work. They're living on food stamps. Uh, and they may or may not remember how to cook. Mm. We taught them, we gave them cooking lessons, we gave them shopping lessons, we gave them lessons on meal planning. Uh, and they're, you know, they're living in rural Iowa, small towns, uh, small town rural grocery stores. So a lot of these folks are not buying organic food. We were able to achieve remarkable health improvements for them. There's no doubt in my mind that if you, if you have the resources, buying organic is certainly very helpful. You'll have a lower toxin load and you would likely recover more quickly. However, if that's not your economic reality, mm -hmm. eat more vegetables, get rid of the harmful foods, and you can expect uh, to have health improvement. Now, interestingly enough, so th these folks living on food stamps, small rural towns, small rural grocers, uh, and they worked with us uh, for six months. It was very common that by the end of six months, they have figured out how to get more organic foods into their uh, weekly budget, uh, either by growing foods, mm. um, partnering with uh, local organic grocers, uh, uh, partnering with local hunters to get wild game. So once people understand that this is an important priority, uh, they're often much more successful. Right. Um, kind of related to that, uh, grass-fed beef, grass-fed, I guess, that protein or wild-caught fish. Um, if that's not available, what would be the best kind of alternative? Is it, it Well, so, you know, we also had people uh, in our clinics who were vegetarian for their spiritual mm. beliefs, or, you know, they had severe financial constraints. So, yes, we would teach people how to have meatless meals. Uh, mm. Using uh, whole whole um, whole gluten free grains such as brown rice mm. uh, and beans uh, to have a complete protein, so that can be done, uh, uh, preferably with a pressure cooker, mm. uh, and then learning how to use uh, less costly cuts of meat, um, and uh, we also talked about having uh, liver uh, once a All week. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so one question, actually going back a little bit. So uh, the the three bad guys like gluten, eggs. There. So you you say they, you say you should have like zero, right? How long once you stop? How long does it take for your system to kind of empty them out? Uh, you know, this really depends on the individual. Some of our folks, they impl they remove the harmful foods, ramp up the vegetables, go gluten free. Uh, and get a really dramatic uh, improvement within three months. Mm. Others uh, uh, took a year. Right. So it, it, it depends on the level of damage. Uh, and it also depends on how thoroughly you implement the changes. Yeah. There's a big difference biologically between doing this 90% and doing this 100%. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, I heard that, that, like even a little gluten can upset if you're, the stomach. You know, so if I had just a little bit of gluten, 
mm. or a little bit of dairy or a little bit of eggs, my trigeminal neuralgia would turn on to really horrific levels of pain in about six to 24 hours. Right. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.